everyone and welcome back. Previously, we uploaded our NFTs to Candy Machine and we minted NFTs with the Metaplex Candy command line interface. In this lecture, we're going to build a website so that users can mint NFTs with Metaplex Candy. And luckily for us, Metaplex provides a quick and easy solution for building a website or a front end for NFT minting. So open up your Metaplex folder with a code editor and navigate to the file env.example. This is inside of the Metaplex folder slash js slash packages slash candy machine UI. You have this file called env or dot env.example. In here we have to connect to our candy machine. So previously in this project we created a candy machine and we now need to connect to that exact candy machine instance. So for this React app candy machine ID, you have to paste in your candy machines ID. And how do you get this candy machine ID? Well, when you create a candy machine, the ID is created and it's stored in your cache. So you can find the ID on your computer. Just go to your root folder and then go into the hidden folder that is called dot cache. So you may have to open up your root folder on your computer with a code editor to see the hidden files or if you are on Mac then you can use command shift period which will show all of the hidden files. So I will show you an example. Here is my root folder on my computer called Alex. And then inside of here, I can see all of my hidden files. And I see these because I pressed command shift plus quickly all together. And then that popped open the hidden files. Some files on your computer are hidden because your operating system doesn't want you to delete these easily. Sometimes if you delete a hidden file easily, it can break parts of your computer or break parts of your application. So that's why some files or folders are hidden. But sometimes we have to access hidden folders because they have data that we want. For example, go into the root folder and then go into dot cache. This is a hidden folder. In here, you have a file called devnet example.json. This was created when you created your candy machine. And here you can open this file with a code editor to check it out. This contains the JSON data, JavaScript object notation data for your candy machine that you created. And directly after the property candy machine is the ID of your candy machine. So you want, you want to find your ID for your candy machine and then copy it. Then go into .env.example and paste in your candy machine ID. That is how you can get your unique instance of a candy machine. And you're going to need this if you want to connect a website with your candy machine because your NFTs, they were uploaded and minted with your candy machine. Next, specify the React app Solana network. We're going to use DevNet because we deployed our NFTs to the DevNet. As well, we need the React app Solana RPC host. Here, pass in HTTPS metaplex.devnet.rpcpool.com. This is the connection point from our app, our website, to the Solana blockchain. And the connection point is being done on the DevNet, the development network, and it's being done via the Metaplex RPC pool. This RPC pool is heavily used by many developers, so if you want a more reliable connection that is not bottled, net, bottled down with lots of other use, users, then find your own custom RPC pool. There are providers out there where you can get your own RPC link. You don't have to use Metaplexes. But by default, these are the three pieces of data that you'll need. So this is what your .env.example file should look like, just with your own candy machine ID. So this file is specifying some data that our website needs to connect to our candy machine. And it's called a React app because it's using React, which is a web development framework, to create the website. 
So it's using a framework or a tool to create the website. All right, so this is what our file should look like now. And we now have to rename the file from .env.example to just .env, which is short for environment variables. Environment variables list out some variables that can be used throughout your project. So here we have a file called .env now. So make sure you rename your file. And again, with this public RPC endpoint that we have, metaplex.devnet.rpcpool.com, this is less reliable than a custom RPC endpoint. So just note that for testing, this is fine. But if you want to build a larger minting project, then it's strongly recommended to use a custom RPC endpoint via an RPC provider. But for just starting out, you can try out your project with a public RPC endpoint. This means we're connecting to the blockchain via a public endpoint, Metaplex, that many other developers are using at the same time. Okay, great. Now that we have our env file, we're going to go into our command line. Then we're going to enter with the command cd. We want to enter the Metaplex folder. So now you can see I'm inside of my Metaplex folder because Metaplex appears on the left hand side of my percentage sign. Then I'm going to enter the JavaScript subfolder slash packages slash candy machine UI. So I'm entering that folder and you can see the contents of the folder on Windows with the command dir for directory or on Mac with the command ls and on Linux ls as well. So here we're inside of the candy machine UI subfolder. In here, we're going to start the website. We're going to launch a server, which is going to run the website. For that, I'm going to use yarn. I'm going to use first the command yarn install. This is going to install any packages that might be missing that are needed for the website to run. The website is going to be created for us by Metaplex because they have this solution for building a website really quickly for NFT minting. Next, I'm going to run the command yarn start. This is going to start the server, which is running the website. So you should see this message starting development server. Then it should switch to compiled successfully. You can now view candy machine mint in the browser. You have these two options local or on your network. These two will link to the same website. This means the website is running locally. So if you ever see local host, it means the website is running locally. So only you can see it on your computer and it's at port 3000 currently, which is like a unique location on your computer where the website is running. So no one else can see the website except for you at this time. If you want to deploy the website, make it available to anyone on the internet worldwide, then you have to host the website with a hoster. Then you'll get the message note that the development build is not optimized to create a production build, use yarn build. So we are in development build because we're still developing the project. When we're ready to send out the project, we would make a production build. So now go to your browser and likely your browser will have opened automatically. If it didn't, then just open your browser yourself and go to the URL localhost at port 3000. This is like going to a website, like you would go to www.mammoth.com. But this is running a website that's on your computer locally, so only you can access it. So go to the URL, localhost, colon, 3000, which means localhost at port 3000. You should see this box appear that says connect wallet powered by Metaplex. This is the starting point for the NFT website created by Metaplex. So how do we connect our wallet? Well, we're going to get into this into in the next lecture, because next, if we want to access the website and start minting NFTs, we have to connect a cryptocurrency wallet. So join me in the next lecture where we'll talk about wallets and how you can connect a wallet to your website. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. 
We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.